Aloha, my name is Lene Reeves, Pacific Islands Education and Training Coordinator with LDH. And today I'm presenting special education, what you need to know. So our goal for today's presentation is to help parents understand the beginning steps to the special education process. So what do I need to know? So let's start with a few basics. Referral. So what is a referral and who can do it? So referral for special education begins with a request for evaluation. And requests can be made to the student's school verbally, in person, by phone, or letter or email. From there, you will receive a State of Hawaii request for evaluation form that you would fill out and give back to the school. There's also eligibility that we will go over later on in today's presentation. And this is where the eligibility team meets to review all data and collectively make a determination to see if the student is eligible to receive special education related services. And then we will move into development of the IEP. And this is the individualized education program that describes the special education and related services that are necessary to meet the unique needs of your child. So the request to evaluate has been received by the school. Um, and that could be from the teacher, parents, or even the early intervention program. Now within 15 days, you will have a meeting with the school. And there will be some really important questions at this meeting to consider and discuss. And those questions are, do we suspect the student of having a disability? What information do we need to confirm this? And if eligible, what information will we need for programming and placement? And also in this meeting, you will obtain and review information and there should be evidence that school level interventions have been tried. So you may have heard of the Hawaii multi-tiered system of supports. So there should be data that shows that those interventions have been tried. Within your team meeting, you wanna clearly express the reason to evaluate, present data, and any educationally relevant information. That could be test results, work samples, if indicative of a problem, could also be data from the teacher, observations, screening information from service providers, and if applicable, documented behaviors or any disciplinary reports can also be shared. As a parent, you wanna be sure that you discuss and share your concerns and observation of your child. And as a team, collectively determine to evaluate or not to evaluate. And if you do decide as a team to evaluate, parent consent will be obtained and you will be given a prior written notice within a reasonable time frame and the procedural safeguards notice. Now we move into evaluation. So an evaluation is the procedure used to see if your child has a disability and needs special education and related services. It is also used to understand your child's strengths and needs and to assist with educational decisions for programming and placement. Now you may be wondering what is the process? So there are assessments and these are the tools and administration of specific tests so you may, have, may hear of the cognitive or academic assessment as an example. During this process, you wanna review, share medical records if appropriate, and your child may be observed in their learning environment, which includes the general education classroom to document academic performance and behaviors. Work samples would also be something you may want to share or have the assessor review and take note of. And some assessments may also include interviews with parents and teachers. So perhaps you're wondering, 
how do you perceive as a parent? We'll start by asking what kind of evaluation will be conducted. Share your concerns. Ask what can be expected. And it's important to note that there is a 60-day timeline for an initial evaluation to be completed. And then finally, request to see the full report at the end of the evaluation. So now we move into eligibility. So once the evaluation has concluded, the team will meet again to review assessment results together, discuss findings and interpretations. And this meeting is to determine if the child has a disability and needs specially designed instruction to learn and benefit from their educational program. At this meeting, you want to consider the three prong test. So one, does the student have a disability? Is the disability adversely affecting the student's involvement and progress in general education? And does the student need special education and related services as a result of his or her disability? So specially designed instruction is organized and planned instructional activities that address the unique educational needs of a student with an IEP. So as a team, you wanna review all the assessment data. And the assessment data should determine the adverse effect on your child's learning. So this means it will show how the disability is affecting your child's involvement and progress in the general education curriculum and what skills are being affected. As a team, you will use this data to also determine if the student's need for adapted content is so great that it cannot be provided without the support of specially designed instruction. So after you've moved through eligibility and your child has been found eligible, you will then work on creating the IEP. So it's important to also note that every student with a disability found eligible to receive special education and related services under IDEA will be provided services at public expense at no cost to parents or caregivers. So let's first start with the PLEP or PLA. And this is the present levels of academic and functional performance. An IEP should have a statement of the child's present levels. So this is where you'll see where your child is at presently in terms of their academic and functional strengths and needs. You may also see parent concerns behavioral strengths and needs, medical history, or anything that may be educationally relevant or helpful to know, and also an impact statement on how the student's disability affects their access to the general education curriculum. This may also include the disability category your child was found eligible. The IEP should also have SMART goals and measurable objectives. Specific measurable annual goals that meet the child's needs or your, your child's needs so that your child is involved in and makes progress in the general education curriculum. It should be specific to what the student or the child will learn. So specific to the skills that they will learn. It should also be measurable and achievable so that progress can be monitored and data may be collected. And it should be relevant to your child's individual and unique needs and time bound to one year or the annual IEP. And then objectives are the steps toward achieving the overall annual goal. 
Then as we continue into the IEP, you will see special education and related services. So again, special education or the specially designed instruction, and then you'll see supportive services. So a child may benefit from special education. This section known to some is known to some as the service grid or service plan. So you'll see the special education minutes of the student that the student will receive. And then you'll also see those related services listed as well. So examples of related services would be speech therapy, counseling, and can also include transportation. So related services are services a child with a disability needs to benefit from special education. So let's take a look at least restrictive environment. So to the maximum extent appropriate, Students with disabilities are educated with students who are non-disabled at least 80% of the day. And I will show a tip and tool on the next slide. But when discussing least restrictive environment, consider which placement would be most appropriate for the student to make progress and meaningfully benefit from special education. First consideration should be given to the regular classroom or gen ed with any supplemental aids and services to make that placement beneficial for the student before considering a more restrictive placement. Schools must offer a continuum of potential placements in which the IEP can be implemented. So here is a graphic just to demonstrate what that continuum looks like. So starting at the top, of course, our regular classroom, and then we move down to gen, gen ed, SPED. So an example would be, let's say your child does very well in math and is in the general education classroom but receive special education for English language arts, let's say for reading comprehension. So when it comes to word problems during math, he or she may need a little more help. So that's when that specially designed instruction would come in. Then we have special education classroom, and this can be part-time or full-time. We have public, right under that, and that's separate public school setting. So this is a separate program on a DOE campus. So an example could be Kupa'a or ALO. ALO is the Alternative Learning Opportunity Program. Right under that, you have private. So it's separate private setting. This is a private program that is not on a DOE campus. An example would be variety or acids. Under that, we have hospital or residential. So that could be Queens Medical or Kahi or Kahi Mahala. Then we have homebound. So this is when the student is temporarily out of school and it's not the same as homeschool instruction. In addition, we also have interim alternative education setting. So this is removal from the student's current educational placement to an alternative setting under special circumstances. So this is temporary, so it is up to 45 days. And again, this is under special circumstances. So that would be if a weapon such as a knife was brought to a school, it could be for drugs or the student caused severe bodily injury, which would be if the student got into a fight and drew blood or broke a bone. So that is what IAES is. So what if you do not agree? So in the event in which you do not agree with any of the steps we went over today, whether that be referral, eligibility, evaluation, or the development of the IEP, you can write 
a letter of disagreement, and hopefully you can resolve the dis disagreement from here. If not, you want to move through the chain of communication, starting with the principal, um, you can do the complex area superintendent and district education specialist, or you can also reach out to your state special education, otherwise known as the Office of Student Support Services here in Hawaii. And I would encourage parents and their IEP teams to work through issues as much as possible. And if engaging in communication is still a challenge, you may request mediation, which the school will coordinate on their end at no charge to the parent. You could file a state complaint with the monitoring and compliance branch of the DOE, or you may file a due process complaint. So upon filing a due process complaint, a resolution meeting takes place within 15 days upon filing a due process complaint to offer parents an opportunity to resolve the issue of the complaint. And then, then you do have up to two years to file for due process. So if you would like more help, more information, LDAH offers a free online learning platform on our website called Learning Works, where you can access our workshops and handouts and view past presentations. We also offer small group sessions, which is the first step towards case advocacy. And that is on Mondays, 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. And then we also have Thursdays, 11 o'clock a.m. to 1 o'clock p.m. Here is where we go over information on what we do as a parent training and information center, laws regarding education, and so much more that parents may need as they go through the special education journey. We also take time to review your concerns regarding your child's education. And if you are looking for answers to any questions, you can always give us a call. We do offer technical assistance by phone um, if you do need more intensive support. And then of course, from time to time, we do host our marathon series. And this is a perfect series to attend where we dive deeper into chapter 60, Hawaii Administrative Rules, understanding the evaluation process and the development of the IEP. Resources for today's presentation can be found on our Learning Works page, the Center for Parent Information and Resources, and of course, our website for Leadership and Disabilities and Achievement of Hawaii. Thank you so much. We hope to hear from you in the future. Mahalo.